one. My name is Stephen Leonard and I'm a uh, singer-songwriter. I've been writing music since I was about 15 years old. And uh, I really, I, I find a lot of my uh, inspiration from my life and people around me and a lot of different perspectives. Um, growing up uh, and confronting my sexuality and really kind of coming to terms with all that. So I really, I, I look at the evolution of my myself. Uh, I really kind of connect to that and, and really aim to, to really share that with a lot of people. If I was dying, lying next to you. Being 15 years old and, and knowing about my sexuality and knowing, you know, how much fear was living in, in that whole, um, my whole body, that I kind of felt this, this urge to really kind of channel it through something. and. and and it's unreal how like the floodgates completely open. And I started writing, started writing a lot uh, in a journal. And uh, and you know I I, did, I wasn't really much of a singer. I didn't ever take any lessons when I was a kid. Uh, when I was younger, I really was watching a lot of female singer songwriters like Alanis Morissette and Tori Amos and yeah, Sarah McLaughlin and, and these these women, these powerful women who own the stage who stood up there and sing their heart out. That to me was so inspiring. Uh, so watching them and, and really kind of seeing how they connected to their music and how that really, uh, really just, it, it was such a connection that I, I felt like that was part of my calling. In a weird way, I felt like that was something I really needed to do. I mean, in a way, and I, I say that, you know, writing music and discovering music was something that completely enriched and, and saved my life because, you know, when I was younger and dealing with the fears of adolescence or, you know, growing up and, you know, whether it's a sexuality, whether it's just being a teenager, uh, I really felt that it was something that was really going to kind of take me further in life and I, I'm so happy that I did because it's just something that I still feel so, so um, connected to. So. I think a lot of my material is really dedicated to to really connecting with a larger um, audience that is is like-minded that understands a little bit, you know, whether it's your sexuality, whether it's defining yourself in certain ways that you know that I wasn't really feeling in in going to you know maybe it was the predominantly straight you know and that that sense of fear that I had that drove me to really wanting to connect a little bit more with you know, the Chicago and gay scene, I guess. Which is Pretty much, ooh, I've really taken as my my audience. Right here. When I first started playing in Chicago, 
and playing the open mics, and there was a lot of support. That's, that's definitely the case. But I think, uh, you know, whether it was Pride Fest or whether it was, you know, Market Days, and, and you know, when I first started playing music, there was it was kind of unheard of, especially within our community, as far as you know, having singer-songwriter playing. You know, you know our, our culture here, to me, uh, was really set upon you know the nightlife and you know going out and having drinks and you know which I've done many of. And uh, I think it was difficult to really kind of to find that audience because it really didn't exist in a weird way. And I started um, knocking on doors of different bars and different, you know, uh, businesses to see if there was something that maybe I could, you know, come in there and produce a show, and, which I, I did, and it was phenomenal. I went to a place called The Wild Pug, which was um, open for a, a few years, and I started the, an LGBTQ uh, acoustic concert series. And I mean, it was amazing the turnout that we would get. It was on Tuesday nights, and we were bringing in people uh, until you know almost two in the morning on Tuesdays uh, for for live music in, in the LGBTQ community. Which I you know in the five years that I had been living here, I, I hadn't seen, and it was just it was so great to see all their all these other singer songwriters who were who identified with the LGBTQ that wanted to play, that they had a song, they had a voice, they had, you know, material that they wanted to share and connect with. So, but I think ultimately that the, uh, it is, I think it's still a little bit difficult in that sense because, you know, I sing to, to a certain audience that, you know, it, it kind of puts me in a, it, it kind of limits me a little bit in a weird way, but I think there's such a, uh, an opportunity to really gain, you know, I look at, People like Lady Gaga and you know a lot of like Katy Perry and these these artists who are really doing a lot for our community. But there's something in me that says how wonderful and beautiful that would be if someone who actually represented that community in a way that they really identified with with those people as you know being um, you know gay, lesbian, uh, bisexual, transgender, queer in, in in that sense that of community. I recorded my first CD with a pen uh, when I was about 25 years old. It was about a six month process. I bought all the recording from and did it on my own because uh, I was kind of coming off of that that sense of, you know, I had to light the fire into my eyes. I had to do something uh, because things weren't just going to happen naturally I, unless I really pushed myself to do so. So I started recording it. I recorded it in my bedroom. I uh, I, this was during a time when I had only a mattress in my room for about three months and every day I would come home and I would put the mattress up against the wall. I would record for about four or five minutes and, uh, and as soon as the baby below me started crying, I would put the mattress back down and call it a night and go to sleep and then I would uh, wake up and go to work and do the whole thing over. chance to fall for what I couldn't have. I left the light on too often and too often. I slept under my bed with my eyes open wide. Soon leaves changed and snow came and I was holding on too tight to the chance. I was like everybody else I hold on to every moment I've lost And 
And I'll carry with me everything I've gained And I know where I've been And I'll continue to do crosswords with a pen Storms were reaching in too fast to avoid. I found peace overseas. I found the very best of me. Now hold on to every moment I've lost. And I'll carry with me everything I've gained. And I know. I'm really excited about OutRock because it's it's kind of putting the spotlight a little bit on, on local musicians and and musicians that identify with the LGBTQ community. And I think that there's such an opportunity there to really bring more of an appreciation for for a lot of those artists uh, and for the audience as well. I think you know I think what this means to to all of us, to all the singer songwriters, even to the audience, is I think that essentially it's it's giving us a, a bigger voice. It's kind of amplifying, you know, what we do and what we think and what we feel in such a, a such a human way that I think is is such an opportunity to to really define um, ourselves a little bit more in, in our community uh, within Chicago and uh, within nationally and globally. I mean, that's ideally what uh, how important this is. So OutRock is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be sitting down with a lot of different artists uh, with different backgrounds and whether they're singers, songwriters, musicians, and that really identify with the, with the community. And we're going to be going out to their favorite hangouts within the city and then we're going to be hear, hearing live music from them uh, in their favorite places as well. So it'll be a fun adventure to kind of, you know, really get the, get down and, and dirty with some of these musicians and, and these writers. and. Uh, to really hear their voice a little bit more. So.
with you.